speaker is working. It seems to work. You can all hear me, I hope. It's a bit low, huh? I like to be heard. Is it all right? Everybody in the back, can you hear me? Very good. My name is Anna, and I'm extremely happy to be here, especially after Swiggy, because I think he has made my life in India so extremely convenient. Thank you. I never thought life in India could be that convenient. And now I know, 15 kilos later, thank you very much, that a diet is also needed. But apart from that, hey was very nicely pronounced. That's exactly what we say in Swedish. And you can see it everywhere in our communication. It's yellow and blue, and it's a typical hey, or it's a typical tuck, the thank you of IKEA. I've been with IKEA now for 20 years, believe it or not, and I think I'll try to survive another 20 years. It's the, the best company in the world. If you're passionate about home furnishing, IKEA is the best place to be. Try it out. Apart from hey, let me share with you, I hope this is the right one. The story today will be a little bit about how we, as a huge global brand, stay IKEA but at the same time get that masala or wasabi flavor that we need to add to the countries where we go. But let me take you back to a short, brief history of IKEA. We kicked off in 1943. The founder, Ingvar Kamprad, was sitting actually in his house in the southern part of Sweden, working from shed like this, doing mail order. He started off as a five-year-old, truly, truly, entrepreneurial spirit, selling matches to his neighbors, creating a name for himself already at that age. People knew that this man would succeed, and he surely did. So 81 years later, soon 82, we are now uh, a very, very historical company starting off in Sweden. Now, our vision is, is quite simple, and our vision was created before companies created a vision. So we definitely have a true reason to exist because we believe that a better home creates a better life. And that is exactly what we're trying to say, to create a better every life for the many people. That's why we are here. And we so passionately believe in it from our hearts. The business idea is quite simple too. It's to offer a wide range of well-designed functional home furnishing products at prices so low that anybody can afford them. And this was the super important point for the founder too. Why should good design and good homes only be for the rich? Good design and good homes should be for everybody, no matter what size of the wallet they have. And the product is what we're most proud of. We have 9,000 product in our portfolio and the product range is our identity. A lot of people ask me, are you going to use uh, some kind of celebrity in India? I said, no, our 9,000 products, they are our celebrities. Sorry, Shadu Khan, we have billies and we have bookshelves that we love. That's what we're going to show. The competitive advantage that we have is the, something that we call democratic design. Every product that we develop in Sweden always have the five dimensions. It's about form, quality, sustainability, function, and low price. When we develop a product and we realize ah, the material is not sustainable enough or the price tag that we set from the beginning is not met, forget it. We stop the development, go back to the drawing board, see can we improve it or actually should we stop the development totally? We have to have the five dimensions of every product. Mostly, I think our culture and values, which is the DNA of our business, is the platform for our global success. You tend to become an IKEA person when you join IKEA. And it's quite quickly showed when you start working with us. In six months, you feel, and I think we feel, this is a fit or it's not a fit. Our values are so strongly seeving through everything we do in the company. It's not a paper in the CEO's office, you know. We live and walk our values. It's about simplicity. It's about cost consciousness. We always fly economy, no matter what title you have. 
We save money where we can. We love saving money and a good deal. We like doing things differently, but they have to be different with a meaning, just not to be different. And there's so many simple things like that that we follow 100%. And if we don't believe in that, I don't think that maybe you should stay with IKEA. So we choose you and you have to choose us. How do we then stay IKEA? We have millions of people working with us and we have guidelines for everything we do. The what we do part is put together in the brand personality and the tone of voice guidelines that we have. I think most of you can feel when you see something from IKEA. It's a twist, it's a tweak. Can you feel, ah, it must be IKEA. And that is the tone of voice that we always use. It's playful, it's humble, it's simple, it's to the point. And that we try to keep as much as possible. The who we are part is the culture commitment, the IKEA values as I talked about, and also the code of conduct, codes of conduct. So this is how we stay IKEA wherever we go. So IKEA in the hearts and the minds of the many people. How do we then stay as global as possible and go as local as needed? I'll share a few examples because I think it's interesting. Uh, let's first look at this uh, kind of a, how, we, how we group the markets where we exist. How do we look at the markets where we are? Well, first of all, of course, we need to have the insights of life at home realities, the history and the culture of that country. What do we know about home furnishing in connection to how people live and how they dream and what needs they have? What is the home furnishing maturity of the market? Home furnishing competence, spend, knowledge, and even confidence. What is uh, the need of that country? Is it purely emotional or is it a rational need or is it a mix of both? What do you think India is? Do you have emotional needs or rational needs? Vote for emotional needs. But the funny thing is for home furnishing, the rational needs are so strong, but it has to be done with an emotional twist. Yeah. And of course, level of IKEA awareness. When we go to Europe, 98% top of mind. It's not about showing who we are. It's showing, hey, we're here. Consider us again. Revisit us. Come and see us. It's about vitality and really connecting to society. The first ad I'm going to share with you, it's a very old one. The quality is a little bit bad, but I think most of you have seen it. It's a classic. Uh, just, just take a look. Do I click again? I probably do. No, I don't. I go back. Do we have the lamp ad up? feel bad for this lamp that is because you're crazy it has no feelings and the new one is much better created uh, a lot of, of buzz I think in the European markets uh, it was created by a director who was not so famous at that time but became extremely famous please look it up and uh, I think this was a kind of a, one of those uh, typical IKEA movies where you played a lot on emotionality, but at the end kind of broke that dreamy spirit with some reality touched to it. And reality it is. We move on to Sweden now, where unfortunately the divorce rates is as high as 50%. How does IKEA connect to everyday life when you are a family who spend time with your kids every other week? That was some of the campaigns that Sweden did. Let's take a look.
Hey. Leo, pak my hand. about where life happens and a truly almost socially realistic feel to the ad but it, it grabbed a lot of hearts in Sweden and I think the, the increase of sales of these products and, and the brand desire grew with this campaign. I have a little one from Norway too coming in quite recently and it's about that imperfect home but how we at IKEA with our product can actually enable not a perfect home, but we can help you out. Things happen at home. Let's take a look. Yes, the rug can be washed at 40 degrees. You're saved. You'll be okay. The doggy can live with you. That's about the imperfect life, making it a little bit simpler, right? Now, I left Sweden and I moved to Japan. I spent about 20 years of my life actually in Japan. And we had a totally different positioning story in Japan. Totally different way of communicating. The home means so much less to people in Japan than what it did in Europe that I was used to. There's so much pressure in Japan to be perfect in everything you do and you try to be a persona on the outside that maybe is not the true persona that you are on the inside. It requires a lot of stress and basically the clear boundaries between the uchi and the soto is really really clear because at the outside you are one person, on the inside you're one person, and that wall is really, really different. You come home to relax, rejuvenate, have an address, have somewhere to store your clothes and watch TV. The home is not for anything else than that. And on the outside you show who you are. Personality is showed with fashion, watches, shoes and bags and cars maybe, but it's not about showing your personality with your home. And getting invited to somebody's home is also very rare. I think I can count on one hand the times I was actually invited to somebody's home. And that is the true opposite of India. Oh my God, the first week I was here, everybody told me, hey, Garajal, come on over, you know, let's spend some time together. And I said, what, is it real? I mean, do they not only say it the way we say it? Like, come on over, you say it nicely, but you don't really mean it, to be totally honest. Here, you guys, the warmest people on earth, you mean it. The amount of good food I've had in so many homes, thank you, India. But in Japan, it's a tricky one. You don't really get invited to people's home. You meet and you socialize outside. So the home is the place where you can unmask and be yourself, totally. You come home on a minus three on the energy scale on a Friday night. You spend the weekend at home and you try to get up to a zero at least to face the next week. If you're really lucky, maybe you can reach a plus two. We wanted to change that. We wanted to make the homes a happy home. 
everybody has nostalgic memories and good things about the home that they could lift. So let's remind and inspire Japan what a home can really be. That was our main purpose with the positioning that we created. So we wanted to highlight those everyday moments, that wonderful dinner that you can actually have with your family on a Tuesday night. Let's celebrate those moments. So happy to be home was the take we had in Japan. So we moved in with a happy to be home and that positioning actually is still around today and it's becoming extremely strong and, and growing. The thing we did with Happy To Be Home was to move into the cities. In Tokyo, they created three city shops. We will get there in India too soon, don't worry. But we had three city shops in Tokyo, and the task was now to create a Happy To Be Home spirit among the youngsters. Aging society of Japan, we needed to do something different. How do we talk to the young people who don't feel connected to home? Well, first of all, we connected with the opening of Harajuku, the first store, with a virtual influencer, a model called Ima. I mean, of course, nobody had been to her home. She doesn't even exist, you know, but we created a home for her in the city shop and also on the second floor of the city shop. So people actually, with a lot of different technicalities behind it, took us months to do this, that they can actually feel that they visited her with constant live streaming in, in Instagram being on top. So she was actually living in the city and the top of mind among the youth, actually, how can I say it? Riced like an airplane, really, really intensively. So this was a good one, but that wasn't enough. We thought logo collection should also be released at the same time. And I, I wonder if we can actually try this out in, in, in India too. In Japan, they love logos. So we did t-shirts, we did you know, pots and, and everything you can imagine and sold this specific collection. And the interest in this collection was just amazing. We had the most increase, I think 45% of all new customers came from the segment of 20 to 25, which we exactly wanted to aim for. Uh, lining up actually outside the little stores from six o'clock in the morning. And now we still today see a lot of people walking around with IKEA logo bags in the city and, and t-shirts. It, it warms my heart to see that. I think it would be cool, but I don't know. How many of you would be wearing a, an IKEA logo t-shirt? Okay, thank you very much, two people. I'm not so sure about the success of that launch here, but let's see. We moved on to Shibuya and we moved on to Shinjuku, three more top cities in, this, in, the, in, the, in the Tokyo area. And for every city, I don't have time to share everything with you, but for every city, we dug into that specifics. If Harajuku is the fashion center, Shibuya is the unexpected moment center. We actually collaborated with some manga artists to make campaigns with manga and connecting to the local artist of Shibuya. For Shinjuku, which is a very diverse, we accept you as you are area, we actually connected to another segment and created a campaign on things that connected people in Shinjuku. So being extremely relevant to where we go. After all this, I, uh, a little bit tired, came to India. 2021 November, I landed, and as, as you know, I told you, I, I was busy eating swiggies and being invited to people's homes. But it was a fantastic time to really get the insights of how India is working and what can we do here. The first thing I had to realize is to make our brand meaningful, unique, and trusted. What do we have in common? What can we build on? And we realized that we have a lot in common. First of all, compared to Japan, people in India love their home. You're so connected to your home. That's a fantastic start. You love having people over and socializing. So do we. You love children. And we work so much with the children's range. You love food. Yes, we love eating too. And most of all, you like value for money. Yes, I think we have a match. Apart from that though, home furnishing interest being extremely low. Home furnishing spend being very low. And I would say like maybe, citing my friend here at Swiggy's, for us it's not only about building the category, it's building the category and the brand. Because there is no category really existing here. And the brand has low awareness so far. So we actually have to do both at the same time. We talked to the few. After the launch in Hyderabad 2018, 
we seemed to be a little bit too aspirational. People thought that we were too premium. And we tried to, uh, and I think basically we talked to people who already knew us. We needed to reach more people, and how do we do that? Now, we needed one strong national brand identity. I think we had been fiddling back and forth between different lines, and we just needed to go for something stronger. So, we took the three top reasons for actually people visiting uh, or being interested in IKEA, which is the scale, the huge stores, the amount of range that we sell, together with the experience of having a little daycare, having food while shopping, and then together with a home product for your home. These three, we started to, okay, let's do something with that. And then those rationalities mixed in with a portion of emotionality. And here we go, Garaja was actually created. And this was the positioning statement. Sorry, I'm in the way. This was the positioning statement that we worked on. Because you know, you all say it, you say it in different languages, but it means the same. And it's the warmest, nicest, I think, uh, message I, I, I can get in India. So that is what we were building on. But of course, then going from, uh, from uh, our previous message into a little bit of Garajao and making ourselves more relevant in India, we needed to talk more about real people. We need to talk more about our products. We needed to go back to basics, not be so layered and difficult. Let's start telling people about who we are. And I think uh, we also started using vernacular. Going for a, a local dialect, I think, was extremely important to connect more strongly to, to the people. Now, this was our first trial, uh, a little bit before Garaja, where we actually tried really hard to connect to the product and the timings where we, where we were at this time, just at the end of COVID. Take a look. Yes, Garaja, 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 We also had uh, moved into the stores instead of showing only homes. much about us introducing ourselves to the market in. What do we offer? What is behind those, you know, blue walls that we can see? What can I experience in the store? So we went back to that track to actually get people interested in finding out who we are. Now, organization is a big thing in India. I love it because when you go to people's homes and you do home visits, you know, you see that people love buying new stuff. Maybe you don't love throwing away your old stuff that much. So I'm not going to use the word, but it's quite, how can I say it without offending anybody? There's a lot to do with organization in India. That's the way I should put it. And we love organization. We have the best products for it. So it's amazing. I think we see a great opportunity for our range of goals to work on organizing your living. Now, next one was actually another trick, but another track, but I go back to the organization. Moving on to vernacular that I was talking about, we also connected uh, with Bangalore to create the local influencer campaign for the opening of Nagasandra, a place where nobody had a clue. What is Nagasandra? Take a look at that. Hey, buddy guy, can you furnish my journey to Nagasandra? How do One and a half, yeah, double meter. What is it? What is it? What is it? How do Excuse, boss. My life and my table are both on its last legs. Nanu nim jutte par pota. Pani kud kade da something for everyone at IKEA. Boss, points table enga dru idli. Dining table matra chana girbe ko. Boss, sadke na wo naak sandra ko kire do. Pani. Bunche naak sandra only for nature. Iga for furniture. This was an extremely successful launch. Uh, and I think after this, talking about Manegibani instead of saying Garaja made us truly become uh, more relatable to the Canada speaking population in Bangalore, too. But back to organization. Uh, we tried out an organization film. Uh, I have to be quick now. 
But this was uh, one of the first ones we did. And this was actually the most popular film that year. I'm not really sure why, to be totally honest. Not my favorite, but I think it's very, very, very comprehensible. Take a look. Have you seen my new book? Second rule, third shelf. Mary sports car? First storage box. Aaj ka paper? Third row, fourth shelf. Organizer ho to aisa. Get amazing storage at affordable prices. Ghar a jao. Come home to IKEA. This one was top one last year. Of course, connecting to the Indian homes, being in an Indian home, filming it in an Indian home, and talking about kitchen accessories, which is, I think, the most popular accessories that actually we sell at IKEA. Kitchen solutions to get organized. Last one is about saving time with organization. We call it uh, Skip the Ads campaign. Got quite uh, a big attention from Global IKEA actually, and a lot of the markets copied this campaign. Extremely simple, but yet effective. Now, I think what we are also doing, and, and this is how I round it up, connecting and collaborating with content creators, YouTube, different the connected TVs and, and other channels, is really what makes us grow the brand the most in India right now. By doing this, we end up being in Indian homes without actually being there. We can talk to the, the many people actually being in their living rooms or in the bedrooms. And this is something that we will definitely build on going forward. Uh, I think we have some good examples here. The very Parivarik uh, turned out to be an extreme success. And we will continue these collaborations going forward. I think we can also brag a little bit because India now has the, the biggest growth brand or the biggest brand growth in the totality of IKEA Global. So uh, we see this really, really, really growing now. And I, we take a lot of, you know, we, we, we feel really happy when they talk about us in Global because India is here to stay. And, and, you know, you should help us all now to grow and become even stronger. But thank you so much for listening. And Gara uh, for God's sake, come on over or Manigibani to our stores. And I'll see you around. Tak.